so with the passe, I realized that it's, it's all right in front of my face. Uh, the syntax, it's all right in front of my face. There's only five patterns in Open Grammar. Okay. So what David's going to talk about here are the five syntax patterns. He's going to talk about 1212, 134, 412, 34, 134. In other words, adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, pronoun, pronoun, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, and adverb, adjective, pronoun. Five patterns. I've I've been trying to work on those patterns <clears throat> so I can teach it. I haven't cracked it. I've cracked the. Oh, it's adverb. real simple. I give it to you right now. You have. <laughs> you, you you have <clears throat> the first pattern is one two one two one two adverb verb adverb verb adverb verb. I've I've got that written down. It's uh, it's just right here. I've got yeah, it written it. down. It's just well, that it's for I camera. Right? It's for your cameras. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And if you want to write a perfect lawsuit in the world of fiction and impress the judge and get paid 500 bucks an hour, you write an adverb, verb, adverb, verb, adverb, verb, sentence structure, and you specifically engineer it so it comes out that way. That's what this is. Then, if you want to, the second one is an adverb, adjective, pronoun. Adverb, adjective, pronoun. Ad okay, so the two first two syntax patterns he talk, he's talking about adverb verb adverb verb and adverb adjective pronoun adjective pronoun well adverb verb is a quick stem music adverb adjective pronoun is a, a two step country western two step then if you do a pronoun adverb verb pronoun adverb you do a pronoun now the third one is pronoun Adverb, verb, 412. So, so far we have adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, pronoun, and pronoun, adverb, verb. 1212, 134, 412. Adverb, verb, come. Pronoun, adverb, verb, come. Pronoun, adverb, verb. And you do three, three word phrases. 412, 412, 412. You're doing a poker. So then, then you've got uh, three, 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 four. Three, 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 four. Three, three. And there's the fourth one. Three, four. Adjective pronoun. Or is he saying three, 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 four? Meaning more than one adjective can precede the pronoun. A three can color a three. Can color a four. Three, three four. Or a one, three, 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 four. One, three, three, four. And there's the fifth one, one, three, four, adverb, adjective, pronoun. And as he gives in this example, you can have adverb, adjective, 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 pronoun, one, three, 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 four. And, and they draw it out for a waltz. But it's music. And everybody's got this music in their head the way they want to color and write. Now, what I would like to point out and draw to the viewer's attention is that nowhere in that detailed explanation where he uses music as an analogy and talks about the numbers and the syntax values and the syntax patterns, the five syntax patterns, nowhere does he ever mention a 1112 or a 41112 or a 41134. Never does he ever say that an adverb would modify another adverb. He does, however, specify that adjectives can modify other adjectives. Three, 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 four. Just want to point that out to those individuals out there who are part of, I guess, what they call themselves the quantum community that are using that one, one, one scenario that this is more continuing to the evidence of my position that an adverb would not modify another adverb. And I give in-depth reasons as to why on my YouTube channel, uh, on my grammar YouTube channel, which is www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass, if you'd like to uh, get more closure on that. But the first one is 
first word is always going to be a pronoun. And then they're going to follow it with a one, two, or a one, three, four. And they're going to keep doing that as patterns in their sentence structures and using commas. And then when they don't have a comma, they will double space to break the continuance of evidence on the page. If you don't assign something to a word using a prepositional phrase to establish it, that's why every sentence I write starts with for them. Every correct sentence structure he writes starts with for the. For is a positional. It's one of four positionals, four of, with, and by. But for is the positional that serves the function of cause, one cause per sentence. And the reason, as he's going to go into here, is that at the end of the sentence comes the authority, by the. And when you use the mathematical interface, you would have the correct mathematical interface. You would have a cause at the beginning and an authority at the end. And when you go backwards, the authority becomes the cause, and the cause becomes the authority. For is congruent with by. Of is congruent with with. And he's going to explain that. Because the is gender neutral. So for the claimant's knowledge, establishing knowledge of the facts is or are with the claim or with the damage claim. There's only two claims. Either damage, you're either getting paid or you're paying somebody to make contract. For the correct sentence structure, communication parsees into grammar performance of the laws, rules, regulations, and codes with the contract by the an author. So, what he just did was go through the sequencing for, of, and then is, with, of, with, by. Now, in that example, he did not put a verb in there, which I think a good guess would be a mistake. But as he's going to go on to certify and clarify, that is the sequencing of positionals when he goes into explaining graphing. And I do have several other videos where he repeats that pattern for of verb with of with by you see in the last three words by is your assignment of authority or the author so the opposite of by is for and the opposite of of is with so the prepositions written backwards notice again he mentions four positionals for of with and by only four are the same. Now, if you want to learn sentence diagramming, you do you do grafting. You write in a column. You make three columns. Your first column is four of is with by. Your second four of is with by. That's a basic correct sentence structure. But you have your cause, your concern, your verb, your possessive and your authority. Second column is, yeah, like that. Your second column is the, or any one of the, the, this, these. <clears throat> uh, a could be used, and could be used in front of a vowel. The word starts with a vowel, but we don't use words that start with a vowel, except authority. Okay, he just said they don't use words that start with a vowel, except for the word authority which is two vowels. It starts with two vowels. Now, this is not entirely true. Now, in the rules of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, you, do not, you would not use a particle of negation in your fact, which is what it's referring to. In other words, a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word means no contract. It doesn't matter if it's a vowel in front of one consonant, a vowel in front of two consonants, a single syllable vowel, a non-single syllable vowel, if it comes in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word, it is a particle of negation and is not used as a fact in correct sentence structure unless you know the mechanics of how to correctly and safely do that. This is what he's talking about. But again, if you look at his website, if you look at his book, if you look at some of the contracts he's written or some of the contracts his student Russell has written, you will see that they do indeed use particles of negation in their facts, which contradicts what he's teaching here and he's taught in the past. Why that is, I can't say. I'm just looking at the performances. One example would be unity states. Vow in front of a consonant, no contract. The 
and then you can take your words and you move your words up and down the list always says the same thing I, I love that analogy that helped me more with sentence structure than anything else yeah when you do things linear linear you don't see it when you do grafting it means you go to your right brain and it all clicks just like a math problem in 1834 the congress of the united states passed a law that all the states names north new york new hampshire north carolina south carolina new mexico uh, north dakota south dakota were compound words so it said state of and then it was a compound so it was a four one three four but the money says the united states of america one three four one two so they had to make America had to be a two, therefore all 50 state names had to be two. So they had to change all the compound names of the states and make them compound verbs to go with the American verb. That is not correct. I understand what he's saying in theory, but using his own grammar rules, even in fiction, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, if you're going to make state of New Mexico into a 412, you would have to hyphenate new hyphen Mexico in order for that to be a verb and be considered one whole term. As it stands, it's still 4134 if there's no hyphen in between new and Mexico. So I've not myself seen any evidence where um, it's mandated that states in the United States are to be hyphenated in that manner. I just haven't seen it on any documents or anything like that. If you have, uh, drop in the comments your source. I'd love to see it. And A means no. M-E-R-I is Latin for mercy. C is Latin for sheep. No mercy for the sheep. They fleece the sheep of the wolf. Now, I've heard David say this uh, in many, many videos. Myself, I have not been able to verify that M-E-R means mercy, or C-A means sheep. If you out there have it and you have a source or a link where you can certify it, show me something in a book or, you know, somewhere, I would love to see that because I myself have not been able to certify this claim in the, you know, since I've been doing this since 2017. They fleece the people of their money. It's called slavery. <coughs> so we're a slave community. In fiction. Interestingly enough, if you go look at David's website or an archived version of David's website, I don't know if it's available anymore or not, but there are archived versions of it on the web. I think through the Wayback Machine or something it's called like that. Go into his dictionary on his website, go into the S's, and look up the word surf, S E R F. This is an interesting statement by Mark, Mark Sean Christopher. He saw Russell in Montana 2013. Pretty sure that this was the date location of a six hour seminar that Russell put on that Mark was in the audience for. The same seminar that a quantum media treaty was created where everyone that was in that room autographed over stamps. Marcus Sean Christopher autographed over a couple stamps on there. And if you look at copies of it, you will see that his name is spelled with a capital M in Mark and then lowercase a-r-k hyphen lowercase k-i-s-h-o-n. This is in 2013. This was authorized 
by Russell. He's an auditor. He's David's student. He's the, at the time, he was corporate with David. And one of the, you know, individuals who knows how to use this stuff and knows how the mechanics work. And yet there was a lowercase k in Mark Sean Christopher's name, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So five years go by and no issue is ever made of it. And then suddenly when David passes away, and then you have Mark and Russell both jockeying for control of the construct. Now, all of a sudden, it's not correct to have a lowercase k in Mark Sean Christopher's name. And then it appears, and this is a guess on my part, that Russell used this as a vetting process to weed out the people that were connected to Mark Sean Christopher. Because at the time, in 2018, because I had taken some classes with Mark um, and I didn't fully understand what was going on with the rule one rule equal with regards to the name and compound facts, I had a lowercase letter in the first letter of my middle name after the hyphen. And Russell asked me why I write my name like that because it's incorrect. And then I in turn asked him, Please explain, give me closure to it, you know, point me to a video, a source, or explain it to me yourself why it's not correct. Because I've never seen it in a video where anyone says anything about that. And then he wrote back something like, you know, sorry for your lack of knowledge. Keep studying. Maybe you'll be a judge in 16 years or 15 years or whatever. And so in other words, he uh, didn't explain anything to me. And just kind of dismissed me. And I had to go find that closure on my, uh, for myself. And you will see a video on my YouTube channel where I do my name correction with the humility. And I explain the closures I came to via rule one, rule equal judge mechanics. And I do give him some credit in the description of the video for at least pointing me, uh, or at least pointing out to me without actually explaining or giving closure to why that is. So I just wanted to point that out, that Mark Sean Christopher's name was on that contract since 2013. As I believe I mentioned uh, before in this video, I've searched for the Quantum Media Treaty document that has Mark's name autographed on it in a, at least two different places, uh, where you can see that there is a lowercase k in his name and that the document was from perhaps as far back as 2013, perhaps 2014, uh, somewhere around that time. But I can't find it. I do remember mentioning it uh, in a video last year. And then it's interesting that now that document disappears off the web. And the Red Thumb Club website is off the web. So this is from four years ago. It's Here's a close-up of the lowercase k. The video and the screenshot is from a video from four years ago. Uh, that's as old as far back as I can find it. So if anybody has that document, if you could please send it to me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. I'd appreciate it. Because uh, I know it's in there. I saw it with my own two eyes, but that's not a continuance of the evidence of uh, first-hand knowledge and able to certify something to you, the viewer. So I'm using these pictures to certify that he, he does indeed do this with his middle name. Makes no secret of it. Here it is clearly printed out in a web uh, screenshot I took from his own website today. Clearly see printed out lowercase k. And not to mention the excessive spacing there and the centering of the text. If you do not give closure as to why you're doing that, though that excessive spacing breaks the continuance of the evidence and and throws everything into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. So again, you know, I went and tried to find the Red Thumb Club website, couldn't find it. I went to a few other locations, and that document, the Quantum Media Treaty, has disappeared. The Canadian Constitution is still there, uh, but not this one. And I have to wonder, you know, does that have something to do with me bringing up this discrepancy of Russell saying nothing, zero, nada, zilch, 
about the lowercase k until 2018 when David passed and all of a sudden there was a political situation. Now suddenly it matters. Um, just interesting. The same thing with David's book. All right. When David and Russell would do director's parties, they would always have that book with them up until the director's party in 2016. Russell never said anything about the book being incorrect. David's textbook. And then suddenly, after David passes and politics come into play, now suddenly the book is not correct. Now suddenly it doesn't, you know, <laughs> doesn't count anymore. So a lot of different evidences I'm giving here. Uh, one thing I will say, you know, again, repeat, you know, I got a lot of love and honor and respect for this man right here, David Wynn Miller, Colin David Ivan Wynn Colin Miller, uh, for the kindness he showed me. And everyone makes mistakes. There's no doubt about it. I do the same. We just have to have the humility to stop and correct and move forward. And we are blessed that this man gave us what he gave us because I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing if he hadn't brought this to the public. So again, thank you very much, David. And thank you to the viewers. I appreciate it. And uh, I hope you join me for future videos.